In this chapter, we are going to add dimensions to our project. The method we are going to use is duplicate the floor plans, both ground and first floor, so we will have a copy of each plan just for the dimensions. OK. Go to the project browser, right click, then I'm going to duplicate view and click on duplicate. As you can see, I just created a new view without the rooms because they are considered detailing elements. That's why there was also an option duplicate with detailing, if you want to keep those elements as well, in this case the rooms. OK, then go to the first floor and repeat the same process. Click again on duplicate. After, I have to rename each new view and let's keep the same name but type dimensions in parentheses. OK. In the exercise for this chapter, we will complete the views that we have just created and we will start with the one on the ground floor. This is the final result we are going to get. So, to start drawing a dimension line, we have to go to the Annotate tab and here you can see the Dimensions panel. Let's click on Align Dimension. And how does this work? It's simple, we just have to click into Reference Lines and then drag the pointer to the middle and click again to confirm the dimension. Now, as you can see, at this moment the references I've picked were the wall center lines. But this is not what I want, as I need the internal distance between both walls. So in this case, we have to change this option to wall faces. Repeat the process again, and now you can see the result, it's exactly as I wanted. Now be careful. Let's place another dimension. Pick the objects right away, and now look. After selecting the two references, you cannot click again in the second reference, because it undoes the selection and we need to insert the dimension again. OK, let's press escape and let's move to the next room. I'm going to pick this reference this time, then the second one, and now I can move the pointer towards the direction of the previous dimension and look that the program automatically snaps in order to align them. Then there are two more rooms to the right side, so now I encourage you to pause this video and try to place all these three dimensions just by yourself. Let's continue. This time it will be a vertical dimension, from this window until the wall below. And then I do the same exactly in the same direction, but for this room, which is the Office 2. Click to confirm it, and then insert another vertical dimension here, and also another one in the kitchen. Press Escape. On the main entrance, I've added the vertical and horizontal dimensions of this area. Ah, and for this one, click on this face of the exterior wall and then place it in this side. In the living room and in the office too, there is a horizontal dimension in each room. Then another one in the corridor. And for the last two dimensions, I will show you a new tip. Click on this wall face. And now, instead of placing the annotation object here, Go to the exterior wall and click there to continue the dimension to that side. Now, on the next step, I'm going to show you how to insert multiple dimensions in an entire wall. First, I'm going to change this tab to Entire Walls, and on the Options, I need to put a tick on Openings and more specifically on Widths. Basically, I will add the dimension for the total width of the windows. OK. This is easy, I just need to click on the wall and as you can see, I'm placing dimensions between each opening. Right away, I'm going to click on the north wall 
and bring all these dimensions here. Then I do the same on this side. And finally for the two exterior walls. After this part, I want to add more dimensions, but this time with the full length of the wall. And for that, I have to remove the tick from openings. Click on OK. So I am placing another dimension after the ones already exist there. And you can also see that the pointer snaps in order to respect a specific spacing between the lines. Here in the main facade, first I insert the dimension for this wall. And then what I can do is click and drag on this grip to this face. So, the ground floor is finished. Next, I need to switch to the first floor. And on this picture, you can see the dimensions we have to insert this time. Feel free to pause this video and try to make them by yourself. The process is the same. And in this tutorial, I will only explain one line because we have to set a different option. So, let's go to the options bar and change this to entire walls. Then click on Options and change the current settings to Intersecting Walls. Then I'm going to select this wall and put these new dimensions over here. This new dimension line is divided in segments between the walls it intersects. Now have a look at this wall's intersection. You can see that next to the wall width there is this dimension with value 0. Usually this happens when you have an underlay level below where you can see the walls in the first floor. Even this time we cannot see them because there is a floor element here. I'm going to change the range base level on the underlay to known and insert the dimensions again. Save the project and... Aha! Now I am only considering the walls here and you can see the dimensions are now with the right intersections. On the next chapter we will talk about components, the command at the right of the command window. Here we can find the categories that don't have a specific command, unlike doors and windows for example. So furnitures, plumbing fixtures, casework or lighting, even others, go to this list. As in the beginning the families loaded are not a lot, it means that we probably have to load the Autodesk families here. First of all, I'm going to create a copy of both floor plans. And I will start with the ground floor. Click with the right button, go to duplicate and this time select this option, duplicate with detailing. As you can see, the rooms, as they are annotation elements, are preserved. Then I have to rename the new view to ground floor furnished. After, I'm going to do the same but for the first floor. Again, duplicate with detailing and then just rename this view as well. OK. Then, as in this chapter, we want to insert some elements like furniture, plumbing fixtures to the bathrooms or the components for the kitchen. Let's make two 3D views. One for the ground floor and other for the first floor. Now, let's open the 3D ground floor and I'm going to activate this option, section box. With this, we can control, with the help of these grips, the part of the project that I want to show on this view. Let's have it in a way that I can see all the rooms in the ground floor. Like this. Perfect. Now let's switch to the first floor. I'm going to do the same. But in this case, I am going to put the visible section up to this height. So now I can see everything on the first floor. Mm. 
Now let's go to the kitchen and insert some casework, as well as a sink. To do so, I'm going to the Insert tab and load Autodesk Family. In this window, I'm going to choose Casework and load a couple of families in my project. In our example, we are going to insert this Casework base, this another one, and a countertop. This one. OK, now on the Architecture tab, click on Components and I'm going to insert first this casework. I select a type and place it on the corner. But before clicking on it, look that I am able to rotate by pressing the space bar. So it's easy, as you can see. Then let's insert a casework base, press the spacebar once and I will place it next to the previous element. Then another one here and the third, this time I need to rotate it several times and don't forget the pointer must be on the back. And now I place it to the other direction. The next step, we need to go to the Modify tab, activate the command line to put the casework, to put all the elements next to each other without having gaps there. I can also constrain them here. So if I move one element, all the others come together. The next thing we need to put the countertop above all these cabinets. There is also a sink there, but the problem is that the sink position is not exactly where I want, as it had to be on the left side. But don't worry, because we can use some tools at the modify panel to fix this. First, I need the rotate command. Click now to enter the rotate ray, and then move to the left with an angle of 90 degrees. After, I need to use the mirror command with the option Draw Axis. It's simple, I'm going to draw an axis and the element will mirror to the other side of the line. Great, now I need to erase the former element and finally move the countertop, click on it, activate Move, let's select this corner as the base point and place it at the corner of the house. Then with the grips I can drag the countertop to cover all the cabinets or use the align tool in this way. Going back to the 3D view this is how these elements look like inside the kitchen. As you can see, all the cabinets are facing correctly. Now, after inserting these elements in the kitchen, on the next step, we will continue with other furniture elements, but this time from the furniture category. Again, we will need to load them from the Autodesk Families icon. Now I click on Furniture, and here I'm going to insert several elements that I want to place in this room. The office too. So, let's add this bookshelf for example. Then I need an office chair and also a chair for the desk. The desk itself. a table for meetings and also this furniture table high level, it looks nice. Then I click on load, I have to wait to download the families and now let's proceed to place them on the house. After clicking on components, the element that appears by default is the last one loaded, this furniture table meeting. I can rotate it if I want by simply pressing the space bar, but in this case I just want it horizontal. 
Now in the end, click again to put the table on the view. Nice. To insert another element, I can click directly on the family on properties. I'm going to choose the other table. It only has one type as you can see. For example, put it here. Now, let's search for the furniture desk. And if you remember the family name, in this list they are sorted by alphabetical order. Or you can either look at the symbol. Aha, here it is. There are several types. I'm going to choose this one. And let's place the desk next to the wall. Now I'm going to insert the bookshelves. Hmm, I think they are better next to this wall. And of course, now I have to move the position of this table. Press escape, select it. I can move it right away or with the move command. Let's find exactly the middle to be my point of displacement. And then let's move temporarily to this side. After we will see what to do. Finally, I need to add the chairs. I'm going to start with the desk chair. And if I press the space bar, I am rotating it 90 degrees. I place it here right in the middle. Next, I put an office chair here. And this time I'm going to show you a great tip to place four chairs in a symmetric way. For that, I'm going to use this command, mirror pick axis. I select the chair, press enter, then I find this vertical axis and you can see the chair is mirrored to the other side. So now to place two chairs on the other side of the table, I just need to do the same process. This time I select both and click on the command after is the same. And finally pick up the horizontal axis. Now I can go to the 3D view to have a look how these elements look like in the office. Now let's learn some tips. Suppose I decided or I realized that I don't want this table here. I can delete it simply, but it is still loaded on the components list. So in order to avoid having loads of families here that I'm not going to use them, I can go to the project browser, click here on families and this is the place where I can unload the families that I don't want in this project. I expand furniture, select the table high level cafe, right click and choose delete. Now going back to the components list, it's no longer there. Other interesting and important feature is that I can create a group for elements that I want them to be together. For example, the meeting table and its chairs. And the chairs. I'm going to click on this chair, then hold the button control and click on the other elements. Then find this button in the modify tab, create group. So I'm going to create a group for these objects and I have to insert the name for the group. Click on OK. Now you can see that if I move the table, the four chairs come together as well. After, I will do the same but for the desk and the chair. Select both. Create a group. Put the name for it desk and the chair, office 2 and you can see I have now the same situation. Ok, so we reached the end of this video and on the next part we will finish this chapter and then there will be other things to learn. I hope you enjoyed this moment and see you next time.